Oh, hello, everybody. Time now for the first Home of Economy podcast. Actually, what we're going to do here is talk a little history with Home of Economy CEO Wade Pearson. And uh, first of all, welcome, Wade. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, you know, we were just talking a little bit before we went on mic here or went on the air. Um, I love Home of Economy. Oh. And I don't just say that. I am in that store at least a minimum of twice a week, sometimes more during catfish season. But I mean, you know, uh, anything from lawnmower parts to my animal pet food to bait to fishing supplies, outdoor supplies. I love Home of Economy. Uh, the store pretty much has it all. Yeah, well, that's what we try to do. Uh, you know, specialize in some areas, but really keep our core customers, especially, uh, you know, people live rurally like we both do. Um, that's kind of a core people that we want to get in there, but, uh, and so much more. You know, Home of Economy, it's iconic in Grand Forks. It's been around forever. Where did it all start? Uh, it started in 1939. Uh, my grandparents uh, started a store in uh, Thief River Falls. And within a year, they moved it to Grand Forks. There's a little uh, shack down by the uh, courthouse. I, I did find uh, pictures on uh, the internet of that place. And it's, you know, not very nice, but mm -hmm. that's, that's what they had. So, uh, you know, started really just with nothing and uh, built it up. You know, I never realized you started in Thief River Falls. That's my hometown. And I thought I knew the history of uh, Thief River pretty good. Yeah, well, it was only about a year in 1939, so I don't think you were around. No. <laughs> now, was the company originally called Mid-States Distributing? No, no. Um, oh, okay. Uh, it was Economy Wholesale Supply because they were wholesaling to automotive dealers was kind of the first thing that really got it going. Uh, Mid-States is another company that uh, my grandfather started, and it's basically a buying co-op. It's still uh, doing real well, and we buy... Uh, most of the products we get through this uh, Mid-States Distributing. So even though we're a small store with, uh, you know, we've been with seven. We opened up the eighth store yesterday. And now uh, what we can buy with the buying power of, uh, you know, of a billion dollars. Sure. Rather than just, uh, a, you know, a little bit. So Wow, 1939, uh, you said your grandparents opened the store originally. Now, I take it is the company stayed in the family the whole time? Yep, yep. We're uh, still in the family owned. Uh, my mom is still uh, involved. She was never directly involved in the management, but she always uh, she always had uh, work to do, um, you know, worked in the store and she still uh, is in, involved with, uh, you know, and talking about stuff, but she wasn't a full time worker. So I'm guessing you started working at the store at a pretty young age. Uh, yeah, I worked uh, when I was a sophomore and then for a couple of years sophomore in high school then for a couple of years i worked on the family farm up in drayton okay and which was good to get great experience understand a lot of stuff but since uh, 1985 i've been there full time so when you started working there as a sophomore did you ever envision that you would be the ceo of this great store and and all these stores well yeah i mean I, my brother was also interested in it and he's there um and he was already working there but uh you know, I always thought it was a great opportunity. So, you know, my uh, whole life I've kind of looked at it as being a place that I, you know, could go, could go to work, and it would be a great place to uh, build something. And, you know, when you have a good store like you have with Home of Economy, it takes great staff. I mean, I, I, I love your staff there. I've been in that store so many times. But, I mean, from the managers all the way down, you have got some great A staff. Yeah, it's it's uh, one of the toughest challenges is having uh, – having people and, and getting them all to buy into what we're doing, which uh, wasn't always the case, but uh, we've got a great team now. So um, everybody's working the same direction. So it makes everything a whole lot easier. Can I give a shout out to Alan? There you go, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> now, every store, especially a store or, or business that's been around for as long as Home of Economy, I mean, there's some really good things that happen and some really bad things that happen. First, let's start with the good things. What's probably one of the most exciting events the company has ever encountered? Oh, uh, you know, I'd say the oil boom. You know, we have a store out in uh, Williston, North Dakota, and uh, back in, you know, 2009, 2010, things just started going crazy there, and we jumped big into uh, the personal protective gear mm -hmm. that uh, the oil people wear and the work boots, and um, 
it's just, it was just crazy. I mean, as much as we could do, it was just, um, kind of like riding a surfing on a riding a wave. It was like, we didn't know where the heck we were going. Sure. Where we were being taken. So that was, uh, that was really exciting. And, uh, you know, of course there's, was a down since then. And, you know, now we're, now we're down again. It was back and now we're down again. Mm-hmm. But that's and, the nature of the business. Yeah. And, and when you talk about that, I forgot, I, I was in construction for many years and, and yeah, I did buy all my boots and work clothes at home of economy too. Uh, we talk about exciting events. What about, have you ever had any devastating events happen uh, with Home of Economy? Oh, yeah. I think the biggest one was in 1987, and uh, it was our fire here in Grand Forks. And I'm sure, you know, people that were around, I mean, they all remember that. But, uh, you know, I went home uh, went home on December 3rd, and, uh, and uh, we got a call at about uh, 11 o'clock that the store was on fire. By the time we got there, it was just, you know, you could see the flames from blocks away, and uh, it was... Uh, a total loss in that store. Now, when when you see something like this, I know there's got to be a million things going through your head. Do we just cash in our chips? Do we start thinking about rebuilding right away? What were your thoughts then? Well, I, you know, I mean, I was pretty young and, and so, I mean, I, I obviously wanted to, uh, to rebuild. I mean, I never had a doubt. My grandmother who, you know, was at an age, she might've wanted to take her money. Again, mm-hmm. But uh, she was very adamant, very communicative community or um uh, orientated mm-hmm. so she never had a doubt either that she was going to rebuild so um you know we were kind of you know thinking about it do we stay in the north end do we go to the south one where most of the traffic is you know who knows what the right decision was uh you know we're up on the north end uh you know we're, we do have a neighborhoods that uh, depend on us so mm-hmm. that, that's ultimately where we decided to go and now you guys are all the way up to eight stores Yep. I mean, who would have thunk it, right? As of yesterday, we opened up our eighth store. We had a lot of bumps in the road with this one with the COVID and mm-hmm. supply issues and any number of things, but we just opened up in rugby. Okay, can uh, can you go back and tell me when all these stores opened up from the original or, you know, that's we're talking some history here. Yeah, the uh uh they started in Grand Forks here. Um or, you know, in Thief River, but opened up in Grand Forks. In 1962, they opened up this original store at the current location. It was much smaller. It didn't have the furniture department, which uh, there was a smaller store um, in the neighborhood. So they combined these other stores that were downtown and moved them moved them there. Uh, prior to that, we had one store that was in Grafton. Originally, that was in Walhall in North Dakota. Uh, my in-laws showed me where it was located. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, so we had a store in Grafton at that time. And then in 1964, my grandfather purchased a chain of stores that were in uh, West, Western North Dakota or, you know, Devil's Lake, Minot, Williston stores came from that purchase. Um, they added, you know, new buildings to all of those. So it's, uh, you know, they're just downtown stores. I don't think they they had a lot going for them. But uh, so that's what happened. We had five. Then in uh, oh. Uh, 1996, I believe we bought, uh, we added in the, uh, Jamestown store. That was the first, uh, new store. Then in, uh, 2015, we opened up the Watford city store, which, you know, on retrospect wasn't the best timing, but mm-hmm. that's, that's how it worked. So we got a, had a good opportunity for a building there and, uh, opened that up. It, um, it's great, great town to be in normally, but they're suffering with the, uh, Oil, sure. Uh, um, demand being off, and then just uh, yesterday we opened up the uh, rugby store. Got to be exciting. Um, I, have you ever thought about going over state lines anywhere? Um, yeah, well, it's different opportunities. Uh, so we'd we'd like to do it, but uh, you know, you mentioned the mid states uh, oper- or buying group that we belong in, and so. We won't go into a town that another mid stater is in. Just as, mm-hmm. you know, sure. You know, it's competing against your friends. It just isn't right. Um, yeah, I, I tend to get off track a little bit here, but when you mention furniture, the Amis Furniture Gallery, um, I tell you what, that is, if you want good quality stuff, that's really incredible. The the furniture over there. Yeah, it's a uh, it's great, and we got into the Amish uh, at the time when uh, our suppliers were, were a lot of them were moving up over to China or they were having struggling, the furniture uh, industry had a real turnaround. Mm-hmm. So we were looking for something that uh, 
would be domestically made. And of course the Amish are committed to, to doing that. Yes. And, uh, I had a trip out to uh, Holmes County, Ohio to, to visit the factories and, and, um, meet everybody there and, you know, great bunch of people. Um, and it's people that take pride in what they build too. Yeah. And they're very, very diligent. And yes. Uh, another question I wanted to ask you, um, the bronze boot sign that you got, I don't, I don't even know how you got that thing in the store, but what were your thoughts when all of a sudden you're thinking, I'm going to get this because it fits perfectly in your store. But I just want to know your thought process uh, when you decided maybe we should try to get this sign. You know, my office window uh, faces north on the highway. So mm-hmm. I'd be sitting there and I love the bronze boot. And we, you know, we would go there for events and family events and a lot of that and for lunch. And, but you could see the handwriting on the wall that they were, they were going down mm-hmm. It just makes you terribly sad. Yes, but, it does. But uh, so I'd be looking out my window and I could see the bronze boot sign, and I always thought, "Geez, that would be that would be a neat sign to have." So I, w- I had my uh, sights on it for um, for quite a while before they did close. Uh, when they closed, we made some inquiries, but they were doing it in the uh, in the uh, auction. Mm-hmm. So, so I went over there and uh, you know participated in the auction. Uh, there was one guy that. Uh, you know, we were bidding or bidding, and, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people had personal use going for it. Sure. The people you're going against. And uh, so I pretty much had topped out uh, pretty quickly, and then another guy jumped in. I don't know if it was just to try to get me. So <laughs> get me up there. But I think we, uh, I think the final bid was $6,000. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, for our use, is isn't a ton of money. But, uh, you know, for somebody doing it for personal Sure. Purposes that doesn't make a lot of sense. So, but then we, you know, it was in tough shape by that time, and all the uh, neon was uh, was uh, broken mm-hmm. and hanging hanging loose there. So, you know, it took quite a bit of money to uh, rebuild that, and then also make it so it uh, it was, you know, be so it's uh, going to be adapted to be in the store. So. Sure. Was it hard to get that thing in there? It really was. I could not <laughs> I watch it. I was. I was there. They brought it in the front doors, which uh, they opened all the way wide, so that wasn't a problem. But uh, standing it up, we did not have enough uh, clearance, or we could not get our forklift high enough to um, up there. So we had to borrow from our contractor a uh, four-stage forklift, and he was driving it there, and we were clearing the uh, uh, sprinkler heads by an inch or two. Oh, I bet. And so... Um, Everybody in the store, of course, was watching it, but I couldn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great addition to the store. Oh, it was off one time, and, uh, you know, we are doing some um, electrical work on it, and that corner of the store just it, uh, was dark. Mm-hmm. And that uh, that corner never worked in the store until we added that yep. as an attraction. And it was always kind of an out-of-the-way corner, even though it's it's up in the front. And once we did that, it really... You know, draws people in. It, of course, it fits with the uh, what we're selling there, mm-hmm. the footwear. So, and and I mean, if you walk in from the the doors facing west, I mean, all you got to do is walk in the door and take a left or look to the left, and and you can see it. And uh, I tell you what, great boot selection, shoe selection over there too. So I think the sign is perfect. Now I know the answer to this because I'm in the store every every well, like I've said numerous times a week. But what sets Home of Economy apart from other stores? I think it's the merchandise uh, is the biggest thing and, um, you know, our, our focus and we're, you know, we're from North Dakota, we're, you know, and so we, uh, we focus on, you know, th- things that we like with things that we use and we can react a lot quicker. All of our stores are, are merchandised differently. The new rugby store, because of the, um, it's, you know, it's a great great town but uh, there's not a lot of competition so we're going to be selling different stuff there then we can sell in grand forks where you have all the big big uh, retailers Mm -hmm. you know back in the day especially when you talk 30s 40s um, there really wasn't anything that you would call a discount store Uh, home of economy one of the original discount stores how did that come about yeah that's a great question and a lot of people are unaware that the uh the government had a law that you couldn't uh, 
you couldn't discount products. The manufacturer would set a price and you had to sell it for that price. But there was an exception in there, you know, in the fine print that if you could offer a fleet discount. So my grandfather had the thought that all the farmers have a fleet. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, and of course, farming was a lot different than too. They were much smaller, much smaller equipment. But he figured if they had a car and a truck, they must have, you know, a combine and two tractors. Mm -hmm. So he, uh, he was the first guy to offer a, a discount card to the farmers. And uh, so they sent out these cards to everybody. And uh, that was the way around the fair trade laws, which, I mean, that sounds crazy to us nowadays that the mm-hmm. government was going to be doing that. but uh, And they did that in the name of protecting the consumer, but I don't really know. <laughs> you know, this is uh, um, turning into an educational thing here for me. Uh, you're, you're telling me a lot of things that I didn't know about. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I think the history of home of economy is great. Um, how has business changed for you over the years? You've been around this store and home of economy stores for the majority of your life, and I'm sure you have seen a ton of changes. Um, how has business changed over the years? Well, you know, everything's changed in business, and, uh, you know, a lot of people don't appreciate that, that, uh, you know, like we have a person there, and his, one of his favorite sayings is that, uh, you know, Darwin didn't uh, didn't say that, uh, you know, the person that was biggest or, or strongest or fastest was going to be going to be successful as the one that was most adaptable Mm -hmm. and that's something we take to heart so that you have to you know look at stuff be willing to let uh, certain things go and uh, in other ways you know focus on new things and always be looking for the next thing Um, you know one of the big ones is uh, one of our biggest uh, vendors right now is the Traeger oh yeah and I remember a few years ago and my my uh, cousin that worked at the store, he he bought them to start selling. And it was like, why in the world would anybody want a pellet grill? Yeah. Now, now it's like I own three of them. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's you know, it's a change of lifestyle. But I mean, you never knew. So once we, you know, once it was explained to me what the theory was behind that, you know, we jumped into it, uh, focused on it, do a lot of events to get a mm-hmm. new thing and and do things like that. But um, you know, for how much I plug Traeger Grills and Home of Economy, I should uh, really work for you guys, too, because, you know, me being involved with all these these events you guys have had on with, with Traeger Grills, I'm, I'm pushing Traeger and Home of Economy to people all the time because um, you really can't beat a Traeger. I mean, no. they're, you know, a grill, a convection oven, a smoker, uh, Wi-Fi. I mean, you can set them and forget them. And I've had probably 20 at least different kinds of food on a Traeger grill at home of economy, everything from chocolate chip cookies to smoked gator. And it was all delicious. Yep. You know, to get back to your other questions, though, it's like, uh, you know, of course the entire, um, you know, competitive situation has changed. We used to be the, the, the big player, um, the big buyer in town, you know, and then uh, there was a couple of chains like Kmart and Sears. Well, they're all but gone now. Yeah, they the are. Country. Mm-hmm. They're certainly gone from their towns. And uh, you know, now you have people, and they're they're in there, and they're doing they're uh, going after categories, and it's really tough to uh, really tough to get the new consumers in town. You know, to think of you as a uh, necessarily like a place to go buy a toaster. Mm-hmm. Now we have our customers that they still buy the toasters from us. Yep. You know, a new person moving to town is they're going to go to one of the chain stores just sure. because that's what they're taught. So one of the things we've had to do is take an item like Traeger that's and be the headquarters for it. Mm-hmm. There's quite a few of these things like Carhartt were the headquarters for it. And that's attracting that same person that would, you know, just, they just don't even think of home economy as a supplier for certain things because they've always gone to the ch- big chain. Mm-hmm. And but they're going to come to us for things like Traeger and whatever. So you have your customers, and then it's attracting attracting those customers that otherwise you know wouldn't be coming in because you know. And a lot of the things is you know we're buying a better product than the chain store, or if we have the same thing, we're selling for the same price. Mm-hmm. Well. People have the impression that it's got to be cheaper at the other place, but yeah. no, it isn't. And we, 
and we'll match their price and uh, beat it by a little bit too. But, uh, and that situation has gotten uh, better even with the internet because a lot of the price pressures are off and it's sure. easier, easier to compete, you know, with people on the internet than it is to, uh, than the other days when people can just check and see, oh, they're the same price or mm-hmm. right here. And, and, you know, there are certain things at Home of Economy that you cannot get anywhere else. I know because I do a lot of smoking on my smoker and uh, I buy a lot of my rubs and stuff from you guys and you can't find them anywhere else. But your store, and I'm not trying to compare here, but it, it is like a big box brand store because you can go in there and get anything from a hitch pin to farm machinery parts to oil, grease, all that stuff to Amish furniture to cooking and kitchen supplies, to cleaning supplies, to lawnmowers and garden tools, boots, clothes. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on. There's not just really one thing that you specialize in. You've got pretty much something for pretty much everybody. Yeah. uh, Well, in the old days, we wanted to be the general store where you got everything. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, we're still that. But... um, you know, also we have to have things that bring in the wide variety of people and focus on it. So, um, and those are, those are tough to find. Those are tough to do. And when you find one like Traeger, that's uh brand new like that, that's a lot of fun, mm-hmm. but there's other ones that we, we shoot for in the, you know, the Honda department, sure. power equipment. We've gone, uh, we've done a lot with the power equipment trying to be, uh, uh, the best place to go for that. And we've, you know, just recently brought in Cup Cadet. And yep. Cadet and I've been eyeballing those, by the way. Yeah, me, me <laughs> I too. need a I'm, new mower. <laughs> I got some old mowers and I, I got to do something next year. And uh, speaking of that too, um, I'm just going to throw this out there. I think your uh, mechanic that you have there, uh, I bring a lot of my stuff to Scott, does great work, yeah. very reasonable, and he's very fast. Yeah, and he's he's a great guy. He is we're, super we're so guy. Lucky to have him. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves him. Um, you know, and another another thing I want to give you kudos for is I don't know whose idea it was to keep that Traeger grill smoking in front of the door there, but oh man, is that a hook? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like what's what are you cooking? Nothing. It's just burning, and it just that smells great. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it uh, gets in the top of mind so that people walking by they notice it. Because, mm-hmm. You know, everybody's busy. Everybody's got a lot of stuff going on in their head. They're getting texts while they're in the store. So doing something uh, unusual like that uh, will get you noticed more than Oh, absolutely. You know, you have your nose to your phone walking in the store, and all of a sudden you go, what's that smell? And and there it is. Yeah, you know, last year we were doing, I think it was every Thursday, and we'd, we'd offer, we'd cook something to have samples, but with the... Uh, COVID situation this year, we just didn't think it was wise. So, Okay. Um, yep. Good call. If somebody out there is watching your Home of Economy podcast, they've never been to Home of Economy. Maybe they have just moved to the area. Why should they come into this store? Because uh, I already know. Yeah. Um, it's just the wide variety of stuff and that you really can't get anywhere else or to the depth that we have. You know, a lot of people have Carhartt, but they don't have the amount of Mm -hmm. A lot of people have, uh, you know, you can get a work boot in a lot of places, but you don't, you don't see, you know, thousands of square feet of work boots out there on display where you can, uh, Mm -hmm. and you can, you can walk in, uh, you don't have to wait while somebody's, you know, looks for them in the back or whatever, everything we have is out on the floor. You can try it on yourself. We have people there happy to help you, but, uh, you know, some people don't want that. So we we try to, you know, have have it where it works for everybody Mm -hmm. now change of seasons it's coming i mean we went from the 90s to the 30s here or whatever typical yeah in one day is there a lot of of um like rotating stuff in the store for the change of seasons i mean is it time to get rid of summer things and go into fall and winter how much of a change and how much work is involved with something like that in a store is as big as home of economy um, yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. I mean, that we have that in the clothing department, which is one of the biggest things we have going, you know, our best season is what's coming up here and, uh, in later September and, uh, through, through Christmas and with the, uh, winter goods, snow shovels and all that stuff. Uh, one of the, the toughest areas is, uh, is the sporting goods department with, uh, just switching fishing. So, you know, the, the tackle for summer fishing and, and, winter fishing is mm-hmm. so different so and it's there's so many 
small items you got to swap out and and not so i really respect the job that those guys do because keeping straight is tougher than heck so yeah like i said you've got an incredible staff over there and uh you know talking about carhartts if a lot of people are thinking about buying their winter clothes maybe they work outside or just doing the snow blowing or whatever and you think ah, those carhartts are a little more expensive than the knockoff brands tell you this right now i've had the same pair of carhartt bibs that i wear religiously all winter long they're not very pretty anymore but i bought them in 1990 and i still wear them every winter so i mean you sell the product that's well mine shrank quite a bit yeah well (laughs) yeah mine did too that's (laughs) and i actually used to roof houses with those things on in the winter so there's not much left in the knees but um boy i tell you what uh, when when you're selling the, the the stuff you guys sell you sell the good stuff too oh that's we always want first quality. We want the name brands. Uh, a lot of our competitors are going to their private brands to, you know, they can buy it cheaper, sell it for close to the same price and make a bigger margin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we don't do that. We try to have, uh, we try to have the top quality brands uh, whenever we can get. And, you know, that's not always easy to get because, you know, being an independent and a lot of the brands are, are hesitant to move up there and they hear you just a farm store while we, we try to run a first class farm store. Yeah. And, and if you're in there like as often as I am, you're not just a farm store. Right. I mean, you got, yeah, everything. Uh, the history of home of economy. This has been very interesting for me. Um, heaven forbid, I don't know what I would ever do if you guys were not in Grand Forks. I'd probably be driving to Devil's Lake. <laughs> uh, and it would cost me a lot more because I'd be going there at least two times a week. But um, uh, Wade Pearson, thank you for coming in. Yep, thanks, John. Uh, love the history of Home of Economy. In fact, um, I know I'll be going there, well, one day this week yet. So um, we're going to be doing this again, uh, Home of Economy podcast. If you want to find out uh, more about Home of Economy, website or Facebook, any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, we have it We have it all there. And we got a new website that we uh, rolled out this summer. We're uh, just trying to get uh, catch up with the 90s, I guess. But uh and, and the address of Home of Economy in Grand Forks, I mean, I know where it is, but what is the address? It's 1508 North Washington is the official address. But. Okay, and you cannot miss it. I mean, big store. All right. Thank you very much, CEO of Home of Economy, Wade Pearson. Uh, looking forward to doing this again. And uh, there you go. Your Home of Economy podcast number one is in the books.